Hello and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. Last time, we were in our room. Our luggage exploded. We have uncursed a hat. We've talked to some uh, to some homeless people. We've talked to the Tin Lizzies. Um, as far as I know, yes, we have uh, the chopped off car door. We got that from the Lizzies. Now let's see. Where else can we go now? All right, I think these areas are so far kind of explored. The the fridge factory, of course, has the gang there that we want to, you know, we want to just circumvent if possible because apparently it's a really tough fight. I mean, who knows if it really is, but I usually like to go with the dialogue options if possible because they tend to be funnier than battles. So let's just go to the boardwalk for now. And see if we can find anything of interest here. A thin, nervous-looking man in a suit stops you. Uh, excuse me, um, do, do you fear for your safety in this dangerous city full of hoodlums and criminals? Um, well, I didn't until you said that. I ain't afraid of anything, least of all death. I carry three spare changes of underwear, and I've already used one today. Um, I'm gonna say this. Well, I didn't until you said that. Then it's a good thing you met me. I have this solution for you right here. Oh, I see, okay. What are you selling? He holds up a small case and opens it, displaying a selection of the tiniest pistols you've ever seen. Derringers! With one of these up your sleeve, in your sock or wherever you can uh, think to hide it, personal self-defense is right at your fingertips. Huh. Are concealed pistols legal in this state? What? Probably. Sure. Uh, how much? Uh, yours for only 30 meat. Extra small derringer. This gun is small, but it packs a modest punch. Deals your moxie plus two, uh, plus two physical damage. You know what? Why not? Let's buy one. Um, sure, I'll buy one. Th thanks. You won't regret this purchase. You spend 30 meat and you get an extra small derringer. This gun is small. Okay, well, wait, you can wear, you can wear 15 of them? Or, or am I misunderstanding that? No, it's, it's wear because we stupidly unlock the um, ability to destroy our weapons, but not to repair them. Exactly, now, now I remember, of course. I certainly don't regret being able to make my rent payment to a uh, Miss Brewster. Who's Miss Brewster? She runs a boarding house for traveling salesmen. Gets real s scary when the rent's late. Location unlocked. Miss Brewster's home for traveling salesmen. Right, we can check that out in a, uh, in a bit. First, ooh, the boardwalk. All right, who do we have here? You're not sure if the lamppost is holding up, uh, the hobo, or vice versa. Let's talk to her. Hi there, I'm Jay. Well, hey there, pleased to meet you, Jay. I'm Dusty. What's up, Dusty? Oh, nothing much, just hanging around. I was gonna run a three-card Monty down here on the boardwalk, but that didn't pan out. Uh, why not? Well, there's a fella already running a game down the way, and I prefer not to step on his toes. Just as a matter of professional courtesy, you see? I see. And also, cause carnies get real scary about that kind of thing, and I ain't looking to be murdered anytime soon. Any way I can help? Well, that's real kind of you. I was, think of, uh, I was thinking of looking for a different corner. Can you spare a nickel for a cup of joe to get my feet moving? Sure, why not? Thanks, pal. You're a real good egg. Fortune teller. Um, let's do it like we did uh, in the prologue and go from the front to the back, just so we have a bit of a, a bit of an idea. Ooh, it's a long pier, but you don't want to take an uh, even longer walk off it. Let's fish. How about that? Fish liver oil sounds delicious, and I recognize that music. That's the. Uh, that's the uh, Carnival Clown Circus music from West of Loathing. Like, it's the exact same rendition of that song, at least. Um, 
<clears throat> the fishermen carry little vials of this stuff around to protect their skin from the open air. Increases your muscle by one until you use another potion. Sounds decent. Uh, mild ways, mild ways, uh, sailor's hat. Um, there's nothing more aggressive than a sailor who's angry that their hat is all gross. Plus four to melee weapon attacks. So that's not bad, honestly. What's next? Wow, a ring. Looks like it got dropped in there ages ago. Crusty ring. A ring rendered unidentifiable by a thick layer of ocean crud. Wonderful. And what's next? Fish in a sack. Um, you find an empty bag nearby that you can use to hold any fish you manage to reel in. Nice you, uh, nice, you caught a stink eye. You toss it in your fish sack. This is a bag of all the terrible fish you've caught. It's pungent. You've fished a stink eye. Okay, current value, three meat. I assume the more fish we catch, the better. Let's give it one more go. Further out this time. A haunted clam. That's why, why it was further out. Um, this clam has seen deeper and darker things than your terrestrial perspective allows you to imagine. I'm gonna call it... A day for now. No access to the ferris wheel. That's okay. First aid. Cooking for health. That seems good. This cookbook focuses. Uh, this cookbook's focus is healthy cheese recipes, guaranteed to fortify your arteries with rich protective cholesterol. Grants combat ability, uh, combat skill, medical manchigo. Heal target for 10 HP and cure all negative status effects. That's actually really good. I'm gonna get that. Cotton candy? It's made uh, of the cotton from expired bandages. Uh, 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 5 HP. Um, oh, 5 H HP until you use another potion. Okay. Uh, gauze pad. Uh, you have two already. The best aid is often the first one. Oh, yeah. Gauze turban. It's a hat. A good hat to wear if you're planning on sustaining a scalp injury. Plus three to maximum HP. And a tube of sunscreen. It's a potion. A high-tech blend of zinc oxide, liquid mercury and arsenic. Increases your hot armor by three until you use another potion. I... I'm gonna... Uh, should I buy it? I'll buy it. My hat collection is looking good so far. Um, the other ones I'll, I'll leave be for now. Games. Game of skills. Test your everything. Well, let's do that then. Step right up, step right up. Test your strength and your agility and your intellect. Every winner gets a prize. You there, friend. Care to face the challenge of a lifetime? Only 10 meat. Um, what's the challenge? I like to start newcomers off with something relatively easy. All you have to do is guess my age. Throw a dart and pop a balloon and drive a nail into this board with one swing of a hammer. At the same time? That's right, care to try it? Okay. Plus three, uh, well, three all stats. Three on all stats and uh, 10 meat. I cannot do that right now. Well, not with that attitude, you won't. What do we have right now? Oh, so basically just our moxie needs an upgrade. So Swiss cunning, Swiss cunning would be a good uh, choice for the next thing, anyways. All right, yeah. Oh, I, I'm just noticing this is all, this is all muscle, this is all mysticality, this is all moxie, and this is um, other bonus effects. Well, that that's good then. And you, a grouchy-looking guy is standing under the shade of this tiny building's eaves. He glares at you silently. Well, so much for that then. Tony Fiasco hat, photo uh, hat photography. Okay. You enter the uh, as you enter, the photographer who is busily adjusting a complicated-looking camera on a tripod gestures to a nearby wastebasket without looking around. If it's more bills, there's my inbox. Um, hello. Hmm. 
Oh, you aimed the jumpin' Jehoseph hat. Yes, exactly that. Uh, baby, where have you been all my life? Excuse me? That face. That's exactly the face I've been looking for. It's perfect. Uh, thanks, I've grown rather attached to it myself. Hey, hey, you're funny too. Baby, I love you. You're incredible. Listen, do you know who I am? The sign on your roof says Tony Fiasco, hat photographer. That's right, baby. There, uh, that's exactly right. And soon I'm gonna be the biggest hat photographer in the city. No, the country. No, the world. But there's something I need first. A face? A portfolio. And you know what I need before I got a portfolio? Uh, a face. Your face, baby. Well, I, uh... Don't say no. Don't you dare say no, baby. Listen, it's easy. All you gotta do is stroll in here wearing a hat. And all I gotta do is take a photograph of that hat. And then we're both gonna be rich. Rich? Rich! Me with my portfolio and you with the 30 meat I'm gonna pay you for every picture. Huh, well, gotta be different hats though. Gotta be different hat every time. I can't pay you for nothing. Uh, for this, uh, I can't pay you nothing for the same hat twice. Got it? Okay, how about this hat? What? What is that? An uncursed fedora? Perfect, I love it. Click. Here's your meat, baby. Spend it in good health and come back soon, okay? Well then. I was just, uh, I was just saying that my hat collection is coming on uh, nicely. So, hats. Well, there we have it. Um, my Louise Sailor's hat. Uh, there's, yeah, we already read that. Let's get that going. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back, baby. Let me see that hat you're wearing. What is that? A Mile Louis Sailor's hat? Perfect. I love it. Here's your meat, baby. Spend it in good health and come back soon, okay? Then let's go for a welding mask. Same dialogue, but with a uh, welding mask, so I'm not gonna read it every single time. Let's go for the Cola Wars gas mask. Well, that's a good way to farm some money. There we go. Um, next up is the broken coconut. What a truly magnificent hat. One worthy of Tony Fiasco's camera, I'd say. And one last one. Oh yeah, that would be the gauze turban. And there we go. Now, uh, that's that's a nice thing to have, I'd say. Um, and let's go to the fortune teller then. Let's see what they have to tell us. You enter the dimly lit tent to see a teenage girl dressed as an old woman sitting in a velvet draped table. At a velvet draped table, I mean. She points to a sign on the wall and says, tarot readings, 50 meat. I'm gonna complain about the price, sorry. 50 meat is a little steep, isn't it? I could buy seven and 63, 64 gallons of gas for that much. She stares at you and points at the sign again. Sure, let's do it. Let's just do it. The first card represents your past. She flips over a card. It's the Lady of Swords. Huh, the Lady of Swords. Was, uh, what does the Lady of Swords mean? Uh, she uh, stifles a laugh. This suggests a piece of unfinished business in your childhood. Something about skeletons, perhaps. Skeletons, huh? The next card is about your current situation. She draws a card, which she drops on the floor. She draws another card. It's the Baroness of Bolts. Um, okay. She flips uh, through a little book. This card means that you're currently sitting in a chair. Amazing. The last card reveals your future. She draws a card, which she drops on the floor. She draws another card. The cautious president. Oh my, what does it mean? She smiles. Your future holds new pants. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for that. I'm gonna consider what just happened. You spend a few moments thinking about the tarot reading. Let's leave. 
I, I mean, I'm always open for new pants. Um, but now, honestly, why not? Let's go to Miss Brewster's. We got that basically thrown at us at the way, uh, at the way to the, um, boardwalk. So, why not? Uh, you find your path unexpectedly blocked by a huge pile of junk. A broken down car, a busted lamppost, a couch with the springs poking out of it, and a wide variety of other assorted trash. Jeez, what happened here? Oh, Gabby has a memory of it. There was an accident a coupling of weeks ago. That car had a tire brake and smashed on the lamppost. That explains the car and lamppost, but why are they still here? And what's with all this other junk? S city trash takeaways are all contractors now. And who wanted to pay for it? Nobody. So the car waits there and people put junk there because that's a place where junk is. Huh. Well, I guess we go around it. No, no, not in the street. That's dangerous. Look at that lamppost for what a car can do. Well, sure, but the traffic isn't bad right now and... Here! It's not any problem. Gabby starts picking up junk and stacking it out of the way, clearing a path through the middle of the pile. Thank Gab Thanks, Gabby, but that's not really... Heave-ha! With a mighty shove, Gabby knocks the wrecked car over on the side and wrestles it into a parking spot. Wow. Ah, <laughs> Gabby sure showed that car where a car goes. Phew. Gabby's muscle increases by one. Yeah, if this antiques thing doesn't work out, you could get a job threatening to park people's cars for them. Well, let's continue to Miss Brewster's then. Ooh. Multiple houses and cars. Let's... Nice horn. Wait, what was that? Ah, they're called tulips, but in this case there are three of them. <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, there's some invasive mana lichen growing at the base of the flowers. You scrape it off. You got an item, glowing ooze, glowing green goo. Perhaps one day the world will be ready for the secret of it. Secret of the ooze. Okay, we can do nothing with it. If you're bored by this boarding house, you could always just leave. Okay, we can't continue up that way. Oh! Here's a message in hobo code. One hobo code knowledge. The code says, nice lady, but she only likes salesmen. Ah, well, not super useful to a non-hobo, but at least you got some translation practice. 5xp. Wonderful. Ah, okay, so we cannot go down the road. <clears throat> Let's go inside. As you enter the boarding house, you discover some kind of uh, hullabaloo or perhaps kerfuffle. A stern-looking middle-aged lady is surrounded by six agitated men, all talking over each other. Gentlemen, I insist you settle down at once. We won't get to the bottom of this with you all acting like panicked schoolchildren. Miss Brewster, you've got to call the cops. Ha! What this, uh, what this town calls pol- What this town calls police, I wouldn't trust- Oh, what this town calls police, I wouldn't trust to solve a jigsaw puzzle, let alone a serious crime. And I won't have those hooligans turning my house upside down. But there's been a m m murder Somebody has to do something. What you can all do is go to your rooms and let me think. Good gracious. Let's talk to her. Um, excuse me? Miss Brewster sighs, exasperated. I'm sorry, I don't have any uh, vacancies. Or, well, I suppose I do, but I can't let you have that room until this whole mess has been sorted out. One of those men said something about murder? Yes, it's absolutely ghastly. One of my lodgers was murdered in the night and somebody heard or saw uh, and nobody heard or saw anything. I'm practically at my wit's end. Well, let's help. Maybe I can help. My name's Jay Flag. I'm kind of an independent investigator sort of thing. Oh, like the Belgian fellow in the mystery novels. What? Uh, sure. 
Well, that's marvelous. If you can solve this mystery, I can pay you quite reasonably. Okay, it's a deal. Thank goodness. What can you tell me about the victim? He was a traveling salesman. All my lodges are traveling salesmen. What did, uh, what did he sell? Oh, they come and go so frequently, I'm afraid I haven't the foggiest idea. Well, how did he die? I... I'm not sure. The body is missing. Look, you'd better just go and have a look for yourself. He was in 3C. I locked the door so that no one would mess around in it. Key to room 3C. Okay. What else do we have here? Potted flowers. This pot of flowers saw nothing. Tiny oil paintings of previous borders. The radio plays agreeable music at a polite volume. The bathroom door is locked. Um, nothing about this plant or this table. Not a crumb to be found on the dining table. Uh, Miss Brewster keeps this place spick and span. A little note uh, next to the phone says, do not use phone. Sure. Only Miss Brewster is allowed into the kitchen. Let's go upstairs then. Ah, okay. Second floor. 2A, 2B, 2C and 2, uh, 2D. Okay. Let's see. Knock on the door. You should probably check out the crime scene in uh, 3C before trying to interview the lodgers. Okay. Let's do that then. Let's go up. What do we have here? Uh... Some high-heeled shoes have been carelessly left in the hallway. You're not sure which aspect of this would upset Miss Brewster the most. Let's take them. Makes your steps higher. Okay, so they do not give me any notable stats, huh? Let's see what... Ah. So we get uh, a piecemeal version of the... Um, of the... What was it called? The Silly Walks Guide thing? It's room 3C, the site of the incident. Let's unlock the door. You unlock the door and put the key in the secret pocket you use for things that won't, e uh, that won't ever need to be referred to again. You step into room 3C and discover, holy crap, a massive pool of blood on the floor. And like, Mi uh, like Miss Brewster said, there's no body in sight. Oh yes. Let's look underneath the rug. You roll up the rug and, whoa, what the heck? There's a crazy occult diagram underneath it. The lines and glyphs appear to have been burned into the floor. You can see little blobs of melted candle wax at the points of the dodecagram. So a 12-pointed star? And it even smells faintly of weird incense. Was this some kind of ritual killing? Great. Uh, like a regular old murder wasn't enough. So, <laughs> the rug had, the, had that pattern on it anyways, okay. Sure, holy jeez. Is, uh, is there even this much blood inside a person? Let's fish. What, el uh, what, what bad thing could come of this? Surely nothing. Huh, nothing. Must be shallower than it looks. Alrighty then. Um. Let's see. The window is locked, so the killer must have come from inside the house. Nothing interesting about the bed, except that it's next to a massive pool of blood. Oops, hold on, I'm gonna enter again. Oh, it's locked, okay. Uh, an ordinary wash basin, no clues here. There's also a mirror. I'm gonna ch uh, check myself for clues. You look at yourself in the mirror. Hi, Jay. Okay, it, it, it's that old routine again, um, but now let's fish. Anything interesting in here? Handful of clean water. That's, yeah, good when you're on fire. Um, pure water, untainted by even a container. Perfect. Let's go to, um, is there anything else here? No. Okay, let's go to 3A then. Knock on the door. Oh, report back to Miss Brewster downstairs and down again. 
Down and down and down some more. Uh, let's talk to Miss Brewster. Well, Miss Brewster, I've had a look inside room 3C. Did you find anything? I found a huge pool of blood. It was really gross. Did you find anything else? Yes, actually. An occult uh, ritual circle. Wait! Uh, wait. What? Oh my goodness. You think it was some kind of black magic sacrifice? I'm afraid it looks that way, yes ma'am. Well, I've always felt a lodger's religion was no business of mine, but I won't stand for this one bit. Are any of your lodgers involved with the occult, do you know? Huh. I do recall that one of them specialized in selling occult supplies and paraphernalia, but I'm afraid I don't remember which one. You'll have to ask around. Okay. Then I'll do that. Room 2A. Hello there. I'm not opening the store with a killer on the loose. I'm investigating the murder. Do you have any information that would help? There's a salesman here who specializes in occult stuff. That seems pretty suspicious to me. Which room is he in? I'm not sure, but it isn't the one above me. He doesn't live at the same end of the hall as the victim either. Okay, so not room A and not room C. Wait, not room C or D, okay. Thanks. So it's... Yeah, what can I do for you? I'm investigating the murder. Ah, yes, r real grisly business. Do you know about the salesman that, uh, about the other salesmen that live here? Not really, just the guy who sells those little derringer pistols. He was complaining about the guy who lives right above him. Um, that's the trinkets and baubles guy. Cause he keeps making a racket, dropping stuff on the floor at night. That probably doesn't help you much though. Well, it's something, thanks. Let's go to... Oh, it helps if I hit the right buttons, you know. Knock on room 2C. No response. Okay. 2D. But if they're 2D... Uh, but really, they're all 2D if you think about it. Haha. <laughs> you knock on the door and a nervous looking salesman peeks out. I'm warning you, I'm armed. Oh, I know you. Yeah, I think we've met before. You sell derringers, right? That's right, yes. You should buy one. There's a murderer on the loose. Actually, I'm investigating the murder. Oh, thank God somebody is. What do you know about the other salesman here? I know that th there's a guy who sells occult stuff. I give him a wide berth, though. All I know about him is that he doesn't live in the room below the sunglasses salesman. I see. Neither of them are the victim, by the way. Okay, thank you. He doesn't live in the room below the sunglass salesman. Oh, this is gonna be a whole puzzle, isn't it? Let's go up then. So who do you sell? Uh, what do you sell? Ah. You knock on the door and a salesman opens it. Hey there, something I can help you with? Well, I'm investigating the murder. Oh, no kidding? Yeah, I was hoping you could give me some information about the people who live here. Hmm. I don't really know any of these guys. There's a fella that sells jokes and gags somewhere on this floor, I think. And there's a guy that, sm uh, that <laughs> smells pants, that sells pants. But all I can tell you about him is that he isn't the guy right below me, sorry. Oh lord. Um, I'm g I might have to break out a pen and paper to solve that one. Uh, knock on the door. Hello, who are you? I'm investigating the murder. What can you tell me about the people who live here? Well, I pretty much keep to myself. All I know about the other salesman is that the one who sells jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. What? Nothing, thanks. Oh my lord. So, what's in uh, 3D? You knock on the door. A voice calls out without opening it. Hello? I'm investigating the murder. How well do you know the other salesman here? I don't know any of the guy uh, of these guys. 
Although I think there's a guy who sells brushes who's neighbors with a guy who sells pants. Okay. Um, I might actually bust out a pen and paper if I find something around here, yes. All right, I'll, I'll quickly make some notes that uh, show me where, I mean, yeah. There's a 3A, 3B, 3C, 3D, um, 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D. Okay, so he didn't tell me what he sells, right? Uh, it was just that the brushes salesman lives next to the pants salesman. Okay. Brush. Next to pants. Okay. Good. So I don't know what this guy is selling right now. Um, 3B. Uh, the salesman who sells jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. Um, so uh, not, dia not diagonal to brushes, right? Isn't the one who lives above the one who... Isn't the one... Okay. So... Jokes... Not... Diagonal to brushes. Okay, good to know. Then we have 3A. What does he have to say? Um, the only two guys I've met around here are the jokes and gag seller who lives on this floor. Um, okay. Okay, so, um, jokes, third floor, jokes, um, third floor, and, um, pants isn't in, uh, isn't in room, uh, 2A, pants, not, 2A. All right. West of Loathing also had some uh, kind of difficult puzzles that uh, like were actually challenging too. So it's, it's kind of fun that in the middle of this thing there's like a completely complicated uh, combining clues thing. Okay. Me again. Could you repeat what you told me before? All I know is the guy who sells occult stuff doesn't live above me. Okay. Occult, not uh, 3A, so let's cross 3A off of the list. Um, and he doesn't live at the same end of the hall as the victim. So does that cross off 3C and 3D? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm gonna write it down for now and not cross anything off. Um, not... Uh, not the same end, not a same end of hall as victim. Oh, so, okay, OBS just disconnected. Let's see if it connects uh, again relatively soon. I don't know what it is with my internet connection in this game. Something about it just doesn't seem right, but I think that mean that means that the um, occult salesman is neither 3C nor 3D. I'm gonna cross them off now. Come on, OBS, reconnect, please. Attempt number two, and it's reconnected. Wonderful, it's back. It is back. Perfect. Okay, so we crossed off uh, obviously 3C. That's the victim, and th well, maybe. Maybe the victim was the occult uh, salesman. Okay, so uh, 3D is uh, off the list. Okay, what does 2B have to say? Um, 
All I know is the guy who sells derringers uh, lives right underneath the guy who sells trinkets. Okay. Um, trinket over derringer. Now. Let's see, where was the Derringer guy? Was that 2C? Ah, no response from, uh, from uh, 2C, okay. 2D. Uh, don't kill me, oh, okay. So 3D is, um, 3D is trinkets. Um, 2D is Derringer. Good to know. Um, a cult salesman doesn't live uh, be, uh, in the room below the sunglasses salesman, and they're both still alive. Doesn't live in the room below the sunglass salesman, and they're both still alive. Okay, so the, uh, the sunglasses salesman cannot be in uh, room 3C because he's still alive. So the occult salesman uh, is not in 2C. Um, okay, good to know. Um, okay, so what, what clues do we have now? Brushes is next to pants. Um, jokes is not diagonal from brushes. Jokes is on third floor. Uh, jokes not diagonal to brushes, okay. Uh, occult not 3A, not the same hall. Uh, same end of all as um, the victim. Trinkets and derringers, we have that solved. Okay. So, brushes are next to pants. Pants, not to A. Okay, so when, when brushes is next to pants, they could be a few things, but not to A, I guess. No, actually, brushes could be to A. Hmm. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six points of information. That's all we're gonna get. Jokes are not... Where? Well, hmm. Anything else we missed? Um, doesn't live above me. Okay, that's just that. Um, we only have like... F well, we have four rooms out of... Uh, Four rooms out of eight that it could be. Um, who sells derringers lives right underneath the guy who sells trinkets. Yes. Go up. Did we miss something? What did you say? There's only two guys I've met around here. Uh, the only two guys are the choke and gag seller who lives on this floor and a pants hawker who doesn't live in the room right below him. Okay. Um, the salesman who sells jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. Okay. And 3D, what did you say again? Um, it was just that the brushes salesman lives next to the pa uh, pants salesman. Uh, brushes next to pants. Um, whew. hold on, I'm gonna take a sip of tea, one second. Now, we're probably missing something, some sort of information. I mean, my guess, um, my guess is that uh, the occult salesman is in 3C and that he was the one that died. Um, let's go downstairs again. Let's see. Talk to her. Ah, 2C is her room, okay. Um, who lives in 2C? They didn't answer. The door is locked. That's because 2C is my room. 
Um, well, can I have a look inside? Certainly not, it's private and you can't possibly imagine uh, I would kill one of my own lodgers. That would be terrible for business. I guess you have a point there. You don't have any information for me about it? Mm, not yet, no. Uh, not yet, still working on it. It's remarkably hard to get information out of these traveling salesmen. Yeah. Anything else that's opened up? <clears throat> like, the thing is, we we have, like, two positions uh, locked down. We know 3D is Trinkets and 2D is Derringer. And, um... We don't really have any other clues that relate to Trinkets or Derringers that we could, like, take a foothold and just move through the clues like that. Um, Chokes is on third floor, though. So... Okay, cult is not 3A. A cult... Okay, it's not on 3A. Um... Trinkets is over Derringer. Jokes not diagonal to brushes. Brushes next to pants. Um, pants not in 2A. Is there anything else we can do? Just some plants. The only two guys I've met here are the Chokes and Gag Seller who lives on this floor. Okay, w wait though. Um, that means also that the um, Chokes and Gag Seller is not 3A. Um, I should have... I should have kind of thought about that sooner. I'm dumb. Um, jokes, not 3A. Yeah, I should have thought about sooner. And I guess like pants, not 3A. Pants, not 3A um, and 2A but I've already uh, jotted that down like that actually yeah I should have thought about that sooner um, okay um, brushes not in uh, brushes not in in um, in 3B brushes not 3B. <clears throat> okay. Then what uh, What other people did you refer to? The brush salesman lives next to the pants salesman. Um, but we know already what 3D is. 3D is trinkets. Um, so that's not new information here. Okay. Now... You talked about doesn't live. All I know is that the occult salesman doesn't live in the room below the sunglasses salesman. They're both still alive. Okay, yeah. We also know who you are. All I know is the guy who sells derringers lives right underneath the guy who sells trinkets. Okay, so we have that. Got it. Thanks. And you. Okay, so. <clears throat> Let's write things down. So what salesman do we ha uh, do we have? We have uh, pants, jokes. We have um, occult. Uh, we have trinkets, derringers, but we already know where that is. Uh, we have brushes, um, brushes, pants, jokes. Um, Occult, Derringer, Trinket, like a brush, pants, jokes, occult, Derringer, Trinket. Um, that's six. One is her and... Okay. 
Got it. Okay, so let's just narrow it down as uh, as we know of it by now. That's six things. Chokes, bands, brushes. Oh, sunglasses, of course. Um, so, uh, 3A cannot be the occult. We've ruled that out. Um, pants not in 2A. We have jokes not diagonal from brushes. Brushes next to pants. Oh, this is... Honestly, this is actually kind of difficult. I'm not that good with uh, logic, uh, logic puzzles like that, where I have to just combine all the things. P, J, O, B, S. I'm writing down next to the uh, letters what it is. Uh, next to the... Um, Next to the rooms, what uh, roles there are. Um, that's the owner, okay. Owner, then we have here P, J, O, B, S. P, J, O, B, S. Okay. What can we say? Pants is not in 2A, let's cross that out. Um, Jokes is on third floor, so everybody on second floor is also not jokes. Drinkets is over uh, is over derringers. We have that. Um, jokes is not diagonal to brushes. So um, do we have? Okay, we are, we don't have that narrowed down. This is not a cult. Um, jokes are not in 3A. Um, pants are not in 3A. Brushes are not in 3B. Okay, so we know that uh, 3A is either brushes or sunglasses. What do we know about sunglasses? Um, Wait, we had something about sunglasses. Trinkets of jokes. Okay, somebody said something about sunglasses. Um, was it you? Right. A cult salesman not below the room of... Uh, not. It doesn't live in the room below the sunglasses salesman. So if we... They're both still alive. So 3C is not sunglasses. Good to know. Um... So uh, 3C could be um, pants, jokes, and and brushes. Oh my god. <laughs> then um, brushes is next to pants. Brushes is next to pants. Wait, 3B cannot be brushes? Uh, and brushes is next to pants. 3D is trinkets. So that means that uh, that 3C cannot be pants. That's good to know. So that can only be um, jokes or um, or brushes. But uh, okay, yeah. If 3B is uh, is pants, then 3C could be brushes. Jokes um, not diagonal to brushes. Okay. And jokes are on third floor. Jokes are on third floor, okay. So either 3B or 3C is jokes. Um, and jokes is not diagonal to brushes. Brushes is next to pants. This is not uh, 2A isn't pants, so 2B cannot be brushes. That's good. That <clears throat> that means what? What do we have narrowed down? Okay, so man, this is taking me a while. I'm sorry about that, and we're not really seeing a lot of things on the screen, but I'm trying to piece this whole thing together. Um. Okay. 
pants is not in 2a, yes, we have that. That means 2b isn't brushes, um, 3b isn't brushes. Jokes are on third floor. Uh, jokes are not diagon uh, di diagonal to brushes. 2b cannot be brushes. When jokes are on the third floor, the brushes have to be... No, they don't have to be. They don't have to be. I'm sorry, my bad. Jokes are not diagonal to... Hmm. Brushes is next to pants. But jokes are on third floor. Okay, that means... When brushes are next to pants... Hmm. All right. What do we have here? So jokes are on third floor. It's either 3B or 3C. Uh, jokes are not diagonal to brushes. 2B cannot be brushes. We found out about that. Then... Um, then that means that um, jokes are uh, not diagonal to brushes. That would have to mean that jokes are that the jokes are three C, right? It's jokes three C. Uh, that would be the victim. I assume that that's what it means. That means that to not be diagonal, it would have uh, brushes would have to be 2A. That would be brushes. Brushes. Um, okay. That that in turn means that either two. B or, uh, or 3B are the occultist. Um, what else do we have here? Trinkets over Derringer, we have that. Uh, jokes not diagonal to brushes. Brushes next to pants. That means, that means 2B has to be pants. Um, that's pants. That means that... Um, what was it about sunglasses? Oh yeah, this one cannot be brushes. That means uh, 3A has to be sunglasses. And... Hold on, I just spelled that really weird. Um, and that leaves us with... Um, with 3B as the occultist, right? Unless I had a, a big mistake in my thinking there. I think 3B is the occultist. Let's hope I didn't get my brain in a, in a damn knot in here. Let's, let's, ask, let's ask her. Um, well, I figured out who the occultist is. Maybe if we confront him with it, he'll either confess or give us some usable information. Are you certain you know which one he is? I won't have you accusing the wrong fellow. Um... If we die, we die. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, all right. Shall we gather everyone together at the scene of the crime so you can do a dramatic reveal like in the novels? Uh, sure, if you want. I must say, this whole murder business is simply dreadful. But it's the most interesting thing, uh, interesting thing to happen here in years. All right. Well, you head up to 3C. Uh, and after a few minutes... Miss Brewster meets you there with the salesman in tow. All right, well, uh, I suppose you're all wondering why I've called you here today. I assumed it was so you could tell us who did the murder? Yeah, that was my guess too. Right, yeah. So, we said it was 3B. Right, yeah. Well, as you can see by this weird circle on the floor, the killing probably had occult significance. Therefore, the most likely candidate is the occult goods, uh, goods salesman, who is... The guy in 3B? 
Uh, right, yeah, well, the guy in 3B. What? No, I mean yes. Oh, yeah, the hat. So we figured it out. Well, I'm gonna give myself a high five for that one. Um, no, I mean yes. I do sell occult supplies, but that isn't even one of my circles. Are you actually accusing me of murder? Um... Well, I mean, I'm not sure he did it. Like, somebody else could have done something occult. Um, I don't really want to let him off the hook just yet, but I also... I think you're the only likely candidate. Well, no, I'm... Ah! No, I'm pretty sure you didn't kill anybody. Suddenly the wardrobe door flies open and a salesman jumps out. Haha! -ha, I fooled you all pretty good. And I had him written down as the joke salesman. I had him written down as that. Wonderful. Haha, -ha, I fooled you all pretty good. Because this guy sells jokes and gags and stuff? That's right! How do you like my new giant fake rubber pool of blood? Isn't it a scream? Yeah, it's... it's pretty good. Uh, here, let me give you something for being such a good sport, kid. Wear it in good health. Uh, foot's ring. This ring bears the insignia, uh, insignia of the Fraternal Order of Traveling Salesmen, which is difficult to make out at this small size, but it might be a farmer's daughter. Makes you more likely to encounter traveling salesmen. Now, if you'll all excuse me, I gotta roll this blood back up. And nine people in this tiny room is eight too many. I'm gonna return to the lobby. Well, I must say that went quite satisfactorily. Uh, here's your pay. You've earned it. 25 meat and 10 XP. Thanks. Glad to be of help. I'd say I'll call if I ever need your services again, but I think one exciting thing happening here every few years is quite sufficient. If it happens again, I'm just going to throw everyone out. Good idea. Yep, that was definitely a YouTube prankster doing one of the typical pranks.